But anyways, you guys can see, for right now, we look at this and we said, this looks like a very complicated problem. Usually people, this is two classes in a row, I guarantee the rest of my classes are going to find like this problem or one of those complex fractions. And they say, ooh, could you do another one of those problems? Because it looks like the most confusing. It has the most numbers and it looks the most complex. But that also means, though, we can probably simplify it and it wouldn't look as bad, correct? So let's look at what makes this difficult or what makes what we don't like about this. We don't like fractions, and we recognize there's one, two, three, four, five fractions, correct? So the best thing to do is get rid of your fractions. So the way that I taught of get rid of fractions, and I will review the Algebra 2 method that you guys are familiar with as well, but the way that I taught it was just identify the LCD. The LCD in this case is just the product of the two denominators. So I said, just multiply the LCD times everything. So every single term, or expression, I'm sorry, gets multiplied by the LCD. And what's so nice about this method is when you multiply by this, all these denominators divide out. So now what we've done is we've eliminated four out of the five fractions. We got rid of their denominators. Pretty good, right? So therefore, we're just left with, you could simplify this if you wanted to off the bat, but I'm just going to leave it as there so you guys can see what's left over. Be careful with the negative. OK, so remember in the Algebra 2 method, what you guys were taught was, or what you guys remember was, just get everything with the same denominator, right? So you guys were just told, just multiply everything by x plus 5, or x plus minus 1, and then x minus 1, and then x plus 5. And then what happened once you had all had the same denominator? What did you do? You just eliminated all of them, right? And what you guys would get, or you'd multiply by x minus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 5 over x plus 5. And what happened is you just eliminate denominators, but what was the same numbers would still be left over, right? So however you guys want to approach it is fine. You're still going to get to here. Now, this isn't an answer choice, so let's simplify this. x squared plus 5x plus 3x minus 3. Going to want to make sure we're careful with our distributive property. 5x minus 5 minus x squared minus 5x. Um, we can simplify this one more time. Combine like terms and see if we get an answer. And do we have an answer choice? Yes, our answer choice is D, right? Very good. Now, just want to be careful. What if my answer choice looked like this? Is that still the same? Yeah. You just, they just pulled the negative out. What about this answer choice? Yeah. So guys, it doesn't matter if the negative is distributed in the denominator, if it's in front, or if it's distributed in the numerator. right? It doesn't matter, negative 1 fourth is equal to negative 1 over 4, which is equal to 1 over negative 4. So it doesn't matter where the negative is. So just got to be flexible with that, right? And then also, if you guys remember on the limits test, we could also rearrange these terms, right? You could also do that, too. So just be careful with that. That answer was relatively simple. It was there for us.